Hello guys, after discussing about cortisol Cushing syndrome, now in this video, let's discuss about congenital adrenal hypoplasia. Okay, we are relating adrenal gland, cortisol with the pathology. Okay, the same topic will also come in pediatrics as well as gynecology also. Let's try to integrate. We have studied that corticotropic releasing hormone is going to be releasing from hypothalamus. From the hypothalamus, corticotropic releasing hormone will come to the anterior pituitary and whenever the CRH is acting on the corticotropes in the anterior pituitary, ACTH is released. Now this ACTH is going to act on the adrenal gland. Now in the adrenal gland, when ACTH is stimulating the adrenal gland, cholesterol which is present in the adrenal gland will be converted into pregnenolone and 17 hydroxy progesterone. Okay, now the 17 hydroxy progesterone is going to convert into aldosterone, cortisol as well as androgens. So, for all these mineralocorticoids, for a mineralocorticoid, glucocorticoid and sex corticoid, the precursor molecule is cholesterol. So, we are calling the aldosterone, cortisol and androgens as steroids so because they are derived from the cholesterol. They have this steroid ring. What I want to put in your mind is that Whenever there is ACTH, aldosterone is getting produced, cortisol is getting produced as well as androgens are getting produced. But the main function of this ACTH is to release cortisol. So whenever there is enough amount of cortisol, that cortisol will give negative feedback to the hypothalamus as well as anterior pituitary. Okay, enough cortisol is there. There is no need of further ACTH. Okay, now try to understand here at this level, the 17 hydroxy progesterone molecules, if there are 100, if there are 117 hydroxy progesterone molecules, 33 molecules are going to enter into the pathway of aldosterone, 33 molecules are going to enter into the pathway of cortisol and 33 molecules will become androgens. So, they are getting equally distributed. This is the first point. And next important point which you need to know is, for the production of aldosterone and cortisol, for both these pathways, there are two important enzymes required. What are these two important enzymes? 21 hydroxylase and 11 hydroxylase. So, 21 hydroxylase and 11 hydroxylase are the important enzymes which are involved in both the production of aldosterone as well as cortisol. Now, what happens in congenital adrenal hyperplasia? Let's see, guys. In the condition of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, what happens is there is deficiency of 21 hydroxylase. Okay, that's the most common deficiency or there can be deficiency of 11 hydroxylase. Now, whenever 21 hydroxylase and 11 hydroxylase is not there because of some mutation, there is this deficiency. What will happen? There is no aldosterone production, aldosterone production cannot happen as well as cortisol production cannot happen. Now, what will happen? See, as there is no cortisol or decreased amount of cortisol, there is no negative feedback. Now, whenever there is no negative feedback, there is increased production of ACTH. So, right now we are discussing all this in a baby. Okay, there was this one baby which is present in the uterus. Okay, it's not even a baby, it's a in utero fetus. Now, this fetus is suffering with a condition where the fetus is deficient of 21 hydroxylase as well as 11 beta hydroxylase. Now, in this fetus, there is no aldosterone, no cortisol. Now, whenever there is no cortisol, there is no negative feedback. Now, what will happen in this fetus? There will be more and more ACTH getting produced. Now, it's all this ACTH where it's acting. All the ACTH is acting on the adrenal gland. So, powerful stimulation on the adrenal gland. Now, what will happen to the adrenal gland? Adrenal gland is undergoing hyperplasia. Okay, that's the reason why the name we have given congenital by birth itself now this fetus will have adrenal gland hyperplasia because of excessive ACTH why there is excessive ACTH there is no cortisol why there is no cortisol there is no 21 hydroxylase okay now what will happen adrenal glands are undergoing hyperplasia and because of the excessive stimulation by the ACTH Cholesterol, lots and lots of cholesterol is getting converted into pregnenolone and pregnenolone is getting converted into progesterone, 17 hydroxy progesterone. Now, all molecules of 17 hydroxy progesterone are entering into the pathway of androgens. So, there is excessive androgen production in this baby. Now, if it's a male fetus, 
there won't be much problem why because androgens are something common in males but imagine if this is a female fetus now a female fetus suffering with congenital adrenal hyperplasia where there is excessive amount of androgens now what will happen this excessive amount of androgens will cause virilization in the female fetus now this female fetus now because of his excessive androgens she will develop external male looking genitalia or we can say there is ambiguity in the genitalia now because of this excessive androgens these androgens will go and act on the clitoris so the clitoral enlargement will happen clitoromegaly will happen so this clitoris it will something look like a micro penis from this we can say congenital adrenal hyperplasia is a condition or congenital adrenal hyperplasia is an example of female pseudo hermaphroditism which means a female looks like a male okay so congenital adrenal hyperplasia is the most common cause of female pseudo hermaphroditism okay also most common cause of ambiguity okay ambiguous genitalia see here in this image you can clearly see the labia majora because of the ex uh, excessive amount of androgens now they got fused and they are just looking like almost like a scrotum and the clitoris is getting enlarged and it's just looking like a micro penis actually this is a female baby but the, there is this ambiguity you cannot say whether this is a male external genitalia or a female external genitalia it's looking like a male so ambiguous genitalia but what is a karyotype? Karyotype is 46XX only. It's a, it's a female. Now, whenever you do ultrasonographic findings, it's a female, right? So, you can see uterus, fallopian tubes, as well as cervix. Everything is present in the abdomen of this baby. Whenever you look for the bar body, bar body is also present. Why? Because of female. In females, because of the process of lionization, bar body is formed. Now, congenital adrenal hyperplasia is a most common cause of female pseudohermaphroditism. Female genetically a female but phenotypically looking like a male so pseudo hermaphroditism okay now whenever you see uh, look at the clinical features this female is going to have a clitoromegaly the genital folds will fuse to form the penile urethra and the labia majora externally are fused and they are just looking like a scrotum it's very simple right because of the excessive androgens all these are happening and there is heterosexual precocious puberty see it's opposite sexual precocious puberty now heterosexual now this is a female because of the excessive androgens the female is looking like a male so heterosexual opposite sexual precocious puberty can be seen and as this uh, as the as this uh, uh, infant is not having any aldosterone or cortisol there will be a loss of sodium from the body normally aldosterone helps in sodium reabsorption whenever there is no aldosterone sodium reabsorption cannot happen normally whenever there is aldosterone potassium excretion will happen but whenever there is no aldosterone, potassium is going to get retained in the body that will cause hyperkalemia. So, the, po the patient is going to suffer with the hyponatremia, no aldosterone, sodium loss. That is hyponatremia. And hyperkalemia, no aldosterone, potassium retains in the body causing hyperkalemia. As well as in uh, the previous uh, video, we just have discussed cortisol sensitizes the blood vessels to catecholamines. Cort uh, cortisol maintains the tone of the blood vessels increases the BP so whenever there is no cortisol that causes hypotension and what are the laboratory findings guys one of the most important laboratory finding is see in the condition of congenital adrenal hyperplasia we have discussed there is excessive amount of ACTH because of the excessive amount of ACTH stimulation lots and lots of cholesterol is getting converted into pregnant lawn 17 hydroxy progesterone so in the blood you can see there is elevated levels of 17 hydroxy progesterone okay so how much more than 800 nanograms per deciliter that's the diagnostic whenever you see 17 hydroxy progesterone levels more than 800 nanograms per deciliter confirm this is a condition of congenital adrenal hypoplasia now these are also certain images where you can see the clitoromegaly with the labial fusion here also clitoromegaly with the labial fusion which is seen in a child especially the female child with the congenital adrenal hyperplasia okay these are also the same kind of images and what we do what we should do for treating this condition now as this is a female female doesn't need a, a, a that enlarged clitoris so it's just looking like a phallus right it's just looking like a micro penis that's something we should treat surgically okay so phallus or the micro penis should be removed surgically and we have to go with the vaginoplasty we have to recreate the 
vagina and this female now she is deficient of mineralocorticoids as well as the glucocorticoids so we have to replace the mineralocorticoid and we have to replace the glucocorticoid mineralocorticoid replacement is done along, uh, done with the fludrocortisone and glucocorticoid replacement is done with hydrocortisone we have to replace whatever is not getting produced in this female okay cortisol is not there aldosterone is not there so we are replacing mineralocorticoids as well as glucocorticoids okay guys hope the video is helpful see you in the next video thank you